my name is Jessica and I'm from the Chesterfield Museum and today I'm going to be talking to you about our memory boxes. Today's memory box is called In the Kitchen and it is all about the memories of home cooking. Memories are so important and help make us who we are and with our memory boxes they are a really great way of reminiscing and thinking and talking about the past. Our memory boxes cover a wide range of topics and more information can be found on the Chesterfield Museum website. The objects in these boxes can help to rekindle old memories and allow people to open up about their lives. Throughout the video I will be asking different questions about some of the objects in this memory box. So please feel free to pause the video at any time and have a chat and see what memories the objects ignite. The first item from today's memory box I would like to show you is this apron. The late 1940s saw the apron become a true icon of housewives and domestic goddesses. Around the 40s and the 50s, women in art and advertising and other media were shown wearing aprons and this represented warmth, practicality, hominess, sentiment and hospitality. It gave the idea that you were in a cosy kitchen and there was enough food for everybody. This style of apron could be referred to as a tea apron and would be worn in the afternoon for making afternoon tea or sandwiches. Also this apron has multiple pockets which would have proved very useful. You could store all sorts in these, they are quite deep and have plenty of room. One of the reasons aprons became popular was that it was much easier to wash an apron and the fabric was a lot easier to clean rather than the clothes and the fabrics that we use to make clothes. Also, women wouldn't have had that many outfits to change into as we might have today. Mass-produced aprons featured all different kinds of prints, like this one is a colourful scene with houses and boats and trees. Homemade aprons were a popular use of fabric remnants and people would often be taught how to make one at school. Did you ever wear an apron around the house? Did you have different styles of aprons? Did you ever make your own apron? Next item from the memory box is this mincer. With the advent of food processors, the use of a mincer is probably not as popular as it once was. Some people still might have one in their cupboard, but perhaps haven't used it in a long time as there are other gadgets to take its place. Some people would rather buy braising steak and then mince it themselves so they knew exactly what was in it. These mincers were also great for mincing bread, for breadcrumbs and ingredients for things like meatloaves. You could also mince orange peel when you were making marmalade. So you would attach the clamp to the kitchen table so it was sturdy and wouldn't fall off and then put the item you want to mince in the top area, turn the handle and then it would come out through this section here where all these little holes are. They are quite fiddly to wash because all the discs have to be unscrewed and washed really well separately. You may have enjoyed mincing meat or other items when you were younger, but you had to be really careful to not catch your fingers in there and keep any fingers well away from that section. Did you ever use a mincer like this one? Can you remember what you used it for? Can you remember your mother telling you to wash your fingers? Did you ever get the job of washing it and find it quite fiddly to do? The next item today is a tea strainer and I actually have two different kinds to show you. Before the arrival of tea bags, everybody would use a tea strainer. People would use fresh tea leaves rather than the tea bags we more likely use today. Though some people did just like to leave the tea leaves loose and let them sink to the bottom of the cup anyway. So this first one to show you is a basket style tea strainer. You still might find this kind of tea strainer in tea parlours today. So this style is designed to be placed on top of the cup. The tea leaves are in the teapot infusing with the water and then when you pour the tea from the pot into the individual cup 
the tea strainer will catch any tea leaves. You then remove it and enjoy your cup of tea. This other design of tea strainer, you would place the tea leaves inside the strainer and then place the strainer into your cup, allowing the leaves to infuse with the water for as long as you like whilst it's inside the cup. But of course, the tea leaves can't escape the strainer into your water. The strainer is then removed from the cup and you can enjoy your tea. Did you ever use a tea strainer before tea bags came along? Do you prefer the taste of tea made with a tea strainer and do you still use one now? Which kind of tea strainer do you prefer to use? The next item is this Ovaltine mixer. This mixer glass is probably from the 1930s. You can see the Ovaltine logo on the front of the glass and on the other side you can see it has the measurements in ounces. It also has a spout for pouring out your Ovaltine. Ovaltine was a very popular hot milky drink and most people would drink it at bedtime and its advertising line was the world's best nightcap. The idea was that you would have a nice hot mug of Ovaltine and then go and have a really nice night's sleep. There was also Born Vita, which was the Cadbury version of a multi drink, which was a little bit more chocolatey and some people preferred that version instead. There's also the drink Horlicks, which is also quite similar to Ovaltine in its multi taste and that you would have it before bedtime. Did you drink Ovaltine as a child? Do you still enjoy a drink of Ovaltine now as an adult? Did you ever mix up your Ovaltine in a special mixer like this or did you just use your own mug or a jug? The next item from the memory box is this rotary whisk. This type of rotary whisk was patented in 1894. The rotary beater transfers the action of whisking into the gears which saves a lot of effort. So they came in real handy to save a lot of effort and time when whisking. It's been manufactured in a variety of styles and also led on to the later invention of electric whisks and stand mixers. Some people still have one of these in the kitchen drawer and sometimes it's easier to use this kind of whisk instead of getting out the electric whisk. These kind of whisks are quite fiddly and tricky to wash by hand as they're so many any little parts and crevices that you have to make sure you've cleaned. Some of the earlier designs of this kind of whisk might have gone rusty but now they tend to be made of stainless steel so that's not very likely to happen anymore. Do you still use a whisk like this one or do you prefer an electric whisk? Do you use it for whisking eggs or cream? Do you find it fiddly and awkward to clean these by hand? The final item to show you are these Trex cookbooks. At one time, a very large number of households would have had one of these. As you can see, these are two different editions made at different times. They have really good, no-nonsense baking recipes, all using Trex, which is a vegetable shortening and can be used instead of animal fat or lard. It's also good to use if you're making your own pastry. It's actually not as popular today. People are more likely to use something like stock margarine in their baking and cooking. A lot of families in the past used treks and relied on these recipes for quick and tasty meals. They now have a really good website with loads of recipes on it so you can still cook with treks and have the same reliable recipes but just updated versions. Another popular cookbook that you might have had was a Bero flour cookbook that also had really reliable recipes in there that could be used for all different kinds of situations. Do you have a Trex cookbook on your shelves? Do you have any favourite recipes using Trex? Did you also have a Bero flour cookbook? That brings us to the end of today's memory box in the kitchen. I hope you've enjoyed going through these few items with me and getting an idea of the types of things we have in our memory boxes. I hope it's encouraged some really interesting chats about the past and perhaps opened a door to some wonderful memories. Thank you so much for joining me and for watching and take care. Bye!